under the patronage of Lieutenant General Sheikh Saif bin Zayed Al Nahyan, UAE Minister of Interior and Deputy Prime Minister. The General Headquarters of Civil Defense presents the 5th Annual Fire Safety Technology Forum, UAE. Uh, my name is John Coates. I own a company that's based here in Abu Dhabi called Global Responders Group. Uh, we are petrochemical and industrial risk management consultants and specialists in the field. I have a rich background in the Middle East. Uh, most recently, I was with BP for 10 years in Baku. Based in Baku, I was a subject matter expert for emergency response in Azerbaijan, Georgia, and Turkey, and set up the initial response for Basra, uh, for the BP operations in Ramallah. Prior to that, I was here on Das Island. Uh, I was brought in to replace John Nemo uh, before BP poached me for Baku, and I was on uh, Das for a year and also spent five years in Saudi Arabia. I started in industrial firefighting. My, my claim to fame is starting in industrial firefighting. I was a fire protection consultant for Jack Daniels Whiskey. We protected uh, 60 million gallons of exotic fluids. Hazmat team was six guys with a straw. All right, so what I'm talking about, what they've asked me to speak about is lessons learned. And we've all seen, there's been quite a few major incidents in, within the industry over the last 10 years. In fact, incident rates overall are decreasing, but the sizes of our incidents are increasing. Uh, this is a chart that shows over the last couple decades how our incident rate per, per person has actually declined, and yet we're still having uh, incidents like Deepwater Horizon, Buntsfield, major incidents. So we need to learn. The most important thing we can do is understand the learning that comes out of that. Eric just talked in depth about uh, lessons learned. Uh, operators, industrial operators, are very good about lessons learned. As responders, I don't find us as good as in applying the lessons. And that's one of the reasons why I'm up here talking today. Some of the recent high profile incidents that we, we all are familiar with, Deepwater Horizon, Gulf of Mexico. Bunsfield, it's been brought up two or three times already today. Shell Singapore, large refinery complex fire. Texas City ISOM explosion. Skidda, Algeria. Kikida. Impact. So Deepwater Horizon took place in 2010. It was a well blowout, 11 dead. Um, changed the industry. De uh, forced a lot of changes into the industry. I was with BP at the time that this incident actually occurred and it forced changes all the way through BP. Now this is on the back of Texas City. Not, not far apart were the two major incidents with multiple fatalities. This particular one, 11. Texas City, 15. <clears throat> BP's investors, BP's investors actually came to the board of directors and said, you can make money, you've, made, you've shown us you can make money, but we do not think you're safe operators. And they actually gave us a year post this accident to change the way that we operated uh, in the, uh, our petro petrochemical facilities. And sweeping changes went all the way through. Now, one of the couple of things that were lost in this was the response. 
This was the largest response ever mounted in the history of the world. 47,000 responders. 47,000 responders, 7,000 vessels, three major incident command centers with multiple lower layers, uh, bronze as, as the, one of the gentlemen spoke of earlier today. 40, imagine trying to manage 47,000 responders. Okay? It was successfully done. But unfortunately, because of the impact of the disaster, that fax got lost. As I said, this, this particular one has changed the industry. BP stood up in front of the world three days after the emergency, or after the incident, and said, um, we killed 11 people, but we don't know who they are. Accountability changed. Um, reliance changed. Jurisdictions changed. Bunsfield. We've all heard quite a bit about Bunsfield. We've all seen presentations. Um, again, another industry changer. We found out a lot about uh, urban sprawl around uh, industrial facilities, how industrial facilities can affect outside their fences. Was not planned in the pr in, in pr prior to this incident. Unconfined gas vapor explosions. We thought we knew how they would react. Bunsfield told us different. Every model that had been done on Bunsfield was, was failed because of this, ex, uh, this explosion. The way the reaction, the force of the explosion was completely outside the models. 43 casualties, two serious injuries, 660 million gallons involved in the fire volume. Three years after the fire, this company was still dealing, this operator was still dealing with three million gallons of contaminated fire water runoff. Another industry changer. We are taught to go in, put water, foam, as much as we can, as fast as we can, get it on, get it on the fire. What happens to that water and foam after, we have, well, after we've used it? Where does it go? It can't go into the groundwater system. It's contaminated. It has to be cleaned. It has to be reclaimed. Right? Smoke cloud 2,700 meters in the air could be seen from Holland. Another little known fact on this particular one, it affected a lot of businesses around it, as we saw in the pictures. Took out a lot of office space. Took out cars. Behind, as you can see, if I can get the pointer to work here, Oops, sorry about that. All right, as you can see in this roundabout, coming on the backside of this was the warehouse for all of McDonald's paper goods for London. Cups, French fry holders. They actually had to institute their business continuity plan to find other suppliers because they could not get uh, stock out of their warehouse while this was burning while this response was going on. Knock-on effects. How does, how does an event affect your neighbors? Shell Singapore. <coughs> no, injuries, no injuries reported in this one, which, which is amazing if you listen to some of the stories of the responders. <coughs> Large refining complex offshore of Singapore. Um, Happened September 26th, 20, 28th, 2011, excuse me. I was up very late last night picking up an instructor at the airport. Multiple product refinery, Ruiz, similar to Ruiz, some of the products in Ruiz. <clears throat> One of the interesting, most interesting facts about this is it was declared under control three times. The fire would actually, the, the, the media of the products was continuing to burn underneath the foam blanket and was traveling underneath the foam blanket and would erupt in unaffected places. Three times the fire department declared under control. This is an offshore island. Fire apparatus actually had to be ferried to the fire. Had to be man manpower, foam, fire apparatus, all had to be ferried to the island. 
all right? The ISOM explosion, Texas City, another very high profile incident, okay? <laughs> Changed the way the petroleum industry deals with contractors. 15 fat fatalities, 15 fatalities, 12 in a conference room next to the unit that blew up. Think about that. A conference room next to a process unit that blew up, killed 12 people. Why? Because we had gotten lax on our procedures. We had let the contractor move porta cabins uh, right next to process units. The 12 that were killed were not even involved with the turnaround on that particular unit. They were involved with a turnaround on another unit. Texas City uses a system of four or five fire marshals that are full-time, and the rest are volunteers, emergency response team members. Some of their team members were affected by the explosion. Reduced the number of people that could respond. Skakita, Algeria, 27 fatalities. And this is an extremely unusual case. We've, we've read time and time again about how Texas City is a good example. Texas City was set off by a pickup truck that was left running. Uh, and when it started to over, over rev because of the gaseous atmosphere, it would not shut off. Two guys abandoned the truck. The truck was the ignition source. So we've all heard about gas getting into engines and we, we apply charring valves or we have vehicle restrictions. In this particular case, there was a gas leak that was drawn into a boiler. Not an engine, but into a boiler. And a boil, the boiler, if you can imagine, the in, it's like the inside of an oven, drew that gas in, set off the ignition, initial explosion, set off explosion after explosion after explosion. 27 fatalities, three process trains completely destroyed, facility out of commission for a year, Shut, also shut down the refinery next door to it. Debris was found two, two miles away, which would be, what, almost five kilometers debris from the explosion. Lesser known accidents that are devastating. I'm gonna talk about Pemex uh, and some of the incidents they've had. Uh, the Caribbean Petroleum Corporation, Jaipur, oil depot in India. All right, so this is a natural gas distribution facility that experienced a catastrophic failure of a valve, subsequent ignition, and explosion. <coughs> Happened in 2012 uh, near the Texas border. The va uh, again, maintenance was, uh, they contribute the cause to maintenance. It was actually uh, equipment condition, no permit in place. 29 fatalities in this particular case. Uh, one of them was run over by a vehicle as he was exiting the facility. He was so scared by the, by the explosion, he went over the wall, out on the highway, got run over by a vehicle. Okay, collateral, collateral injuries. 46 additionally injured. Nope, this will not. All right, the video is available on YouTube, um, and it shows the actual explosion happening. It sh shows it from two different camera angles. It'll show you the debris pass, uh, and the unfortunate thing is, is on the back end of the video, it actually shows you the different the different characteristics of flame patterns between jet jet uh, fires and liquid fires. This is the aftermath. I don't know if we can. Let me see. All right, if you look at this truck right here, it's coming through the facility. The explosion actually happens right here. That's what remains of the truck. There was no remains of the cab at all and the two people inside. Um, unexpected effects of this particular incident. Uh, closure of the highway, that was not planned. The explosion took out part of the highway. They could not get responding vehicles in. Closure, uh, restrictions of airspace because of um, smoke. <clears throat> Control of the fire actually took Mexi the Mexican military because it overwhelmed the local fire team. There had not been enough resource planning 
uh, and they had to evacuate an area of over five kilometers. Shut in the wells. The blast caused the shut in of the wells. Now, anybody in the petroleum industry un understands that once you shut in a well, you may or may not get it back. So that can be, have a very devastating effect on the business. Uh, neighboring, neighboring facilities were affected. There was no accountability for the contractors. None whatsoever. There were 20 contractors, uh, the, of the 29 killed, 20 were contractors, and Pemex didn't know who they were, how they were involved, why they were even on the property until much later. Pemex has had a, a, a spate of uh, security issues with hot taps and their pipes being tapped. We had, the, we had the same issue up in Georgia with BP. So they put in extra security measures. The security measures had a knock-on effect of people could not escape the facility. Several of the fatalities were caught at the security measures and uh, captured in the overpressure waves. Inadequate permit to work system. Pemex has had a history, a very long history of incidents. In 2010, they killed 28 people uh, in a pipeline explosion. 2011, a refinery explosion. This one in 2012 in the natural gas distribution. And they just recently had another refinery explosion that killed three more. Caribbean Petroleum Corporation. Dates, significance dates. Initial, explosion, initial ignition and explosion happened on October 23rd. Extinguishment happened on the, uh, the 25th. Evacuees were kept away from their homes until the 27th. And later, uh, the following year, the company had to file bankruptcy because of the, issue, because of the incident. One of the reasons I brought this one up in particular because it, it, there's a lot of similarities with the configuration of Fujera. It's located in Puerto Rico. It's a multi-product uh, uh, refinery and storage facilities, 48,000 barrels of crude a day plus 40 storage tanks. It has multiple different product lines. So fuel leak, un unconvined vapor cloud, finds an existing source, sparks off a explosion that measures 2.8 magnitude on a Richter scale. Casualties, there were three officially reported, um, but as you can see, as you, as you research through the material, there were a lot of unreported injuries, such as drivers having windows blast out of their car, uh, two people at the ar lo local army base were actually injured from the pressure wave, uh, and four people went to the hospital for respiratory problems. Response time, there was no site response. Now, we're going to look at the facility here in just a second. There was five people at the facility at the time. Of, so there was no site response whatsoever. Explosion happened at 1223. The first call, because of the evacuation, the five, there's only five people there. They all left. So the, the Puerto Rican version of 911 did not get called until four minutes later. So there was a delay there. Two local fire stations. Uh, responded. The, the Civil Defense Commander there saw what was going on, called all, uh, an island-wide response, uh, emptied all the fire stations on the island, including the airports, which caused the closure of air traffic by FAA. You don't have protection for airplanes coming in. They will not let the, plans, the planes land. That size facility had five people there. No control of work. All right, unexpected uh, effects. Closure of the airports, again, uh, not from smoke, although there was restrictions in airspace because of the amount of smoke, but closure of the airports because there was no fire protection. Again, these were FAA facilities. If 
under FAA rules, if you don't have proper fire protection for in inbound planes, then the planes cannot land. Vessels were restricted to, uh, in and out of the ports. Puerto Rico was basically shut down from the outside world. <coughs> thousand, were, thousand plus were evacuated, schools were closed, and closed the uh, local army fort. $500 billion lawsuit was filed by a local community, and the corporation ended up going out of business filing bankruptcy. Should you plan for your emergencies? All right, so no site response team, water supply was inadequate for the hazard. They did not have their planning complete at all. Uh, in this particular case, another overfill like Buntsfield uh, and the ISOM unit, a level gauge was uh, unreadable, out of calibration. That's what they put the root cause as. Uh, and effects on the outside uh, community and, and facilities was not expected. Only got a couple minutes left. Jaipur, India. Distribution facility, no production, only maintained liquids, hydrocarbon liquids for distribution to local uh, retailers. Uh, the ignition happened uh, on October 29th. It was not ex uh, extinguished till 11 days later. Uh, it was located in the Indian, Indian state of, uh, have some help here, R Rajasthan. Is that correct, Rajasthan? Okay. Um, that's a product inventory at the time. Uh, the, ca the capacity of the facility was much larger, but they had uh, brought their, some of their liquid levels down, or it could have burned longer than the 11 days it did. Uh, improperly installed valve. Uh, they were doing a hammer blind. Uh, it did not work. Gas, uh, gas released. Large actual liquid release, liquid vaporized, the gasoline vaporized. Uh, it was motor spirits. Uh, they thought they had it under control, did not, found an ignition source, and the initial blast measured 2.3 on the Richter scale. The initial blast, there was so much liquid on the ground, the initial blast took out nine of 11 tanks on the property. There were two subsequent explosions. Um, the, involved the, the remaining two tanks, and overall, during the whole course of the 11 days, there were six explosions experienced. <coughs> oh, interesting fact of it. Uh, the uh, Indian, Oil, Indian National Oil Company actually believes an unprotected light fixture in the admin block is what the ignition source was. All right, 35 local firefighters, that was it. That was all they had to protect this facility and the towns and the communities surrounding was 35 firefighters. They had 35 firefighters, 31 apparatus. Looks like everybody drove one piece, one piece of equipment to, to the fire. Uh, and 300 military personnel to fight the fire. Uh, fatalities were 11 fatalities, 300 plus injuries evacuation of 500,000 people. How do you manage the evacuation of 500,000 people? <coughs> That's the control room. That's the fire pumps. Much like Bunsfield, the first casualty of the Bunsfield explosion were the fire pumps because of their location. Are we locating our equipment in the proper place? We go out and look at our facilities. Okay. Um, are, are the fire pumps in a protected location or are they in a convenient location? Fire pumps here were in a convenient location. Fire pumps after the explosion were unusable. Same thing with Bunsfield. Bunsfield took out the fire pumps and their fire water supply. One of the authorities, <clears throat> as a precaution, decided to cut the power to the entire community without notifying anyone. We've got a fire, we've got a major emergency, they cut the power off. That includes the hospitals, schools, residents, they cut all the power off. <clears throat> Catastrophic damage to any neighboring facilities. 
They were just wiped out through this series of explosions. Again, not in the planning. Everything's going to stay inside the fence when you're planning. Evacuation of a resort, uh, so we're affecting the economy. Schools and colleges were closed. The terminal ended up being closed. Nine company officials were brought up on criminal charges. One of the first times in India. Nine company officials were brought up on criminal charges. Okay, control room was completely unmanned. The person that was supposed to be there did not show up for duty. <coughs> no site response. Cooling water system didn't work, obviously, as you saw that. Foam system did not work. Portable gas detection was not available, did not, did not uh, register the um, gas cloud. Uh, facility was not prepared for an event of this scale. One of the operators actually said, this could never happen here. And he actually said that after the explosion. All right, so the past is where we learn, the future is where we apply. I always like this statement, don't give up in the middle. We know where we're going, we know where we are. How do we get there? Lessons learned, industry is very good. Operations is very good on picking up lessons learned. I think personally, uh, from the emergency response and industry, tends to be rather slow at picking up these lessons. Now there's ex obvious exceptions to the rules that we saw some really good slides just a while ago. But industry as a whole is slow on picking up emergency response lessons, okay? Examples, fire pump locations. Go around to local industry, see if they are next to an LNG sphere or storage tanks. Is that where your fire pumps are located? Availability of fire water. As Eric goes around the world, the first thing he looks at is fire water. Okay, if I've got a tank I've got to put out, where's the water coming from? That's a big thing. Contaminated fire water, new, th new thing that we're learning. What do we do with this? How do we clean this up? Accountability. Duty of care demands that companies are accountable. BP in the Deepwater Horizon had left accountability to the contractor. The contractor had thought somebody else was being accountable. That person thought BP was being accountable because of the BP facility. We have, a we have a corporate responsibility to protect anyone on our facilities. <coughs> Resourcing. Do we have adequate resources? Do we have foam? Do we have water? Do we have manpower? It's not just enough to buy things. How are you going to apply it? How are you going to get it there? Logistics. Okay. This is a personal philosophy. Once a risk is identified, the corporation, the company, the process owner has to be held responsible for mitigation. We can't say we're going to let it burn to the ground. I've worked within companies that had that philosophy. We're going to have a burn down philosophy. It's not acceptable anymore. Planning. Crisis management planning has to be holistic. It has to be complete. It has to involve all stakeholders, not one person sitting in a room writing a plan. Not a consultant sitting off-site writing a plan. Has to involve everyone, All right? Also, it has to be, has to include effects of neighboring properties. How, how would an event on our property affect a neighboring property? How would an event on a neighboring property affect us? We have to incorporate that into our planning. And this is my last slide, and I'll let you guys go, because I know it's lunchtime. <laughs> Cycle of an emergency. This is something we always talk about in our planning. In industrial, the cycle of emergency get, goes all the way to return to normal operations. Industrial facilities are in business to make money. So it doesn't stop just at mitigation of an incident. We have to go through into our business recovery and return ourselves to normal ops. Everyone's very acquainted with training, planning, exercises. We're going to mount a response of some type. We're going to go to the, we're going to go to the event. Okay? 
We're gonna, do, we're gonna mitigate it and try to stabilize it. The process does not stop there. We've got to continue the process until we're back into an economically viable state or the business is recovered. And with that, shukran jazilam.